G'day guys, back with the Circle. So, yesterday I put out a video talking about the white scars and my experiences with them. And today I want to talk about the Dark Angels because, well, they've previewed a bunch of units for Book 9. This is interesting as a development because their rules came out in Book 6. Book 6 was four years ago now. Yeah, time flies. The only... Legion to really get their stuff since then is the Blood Angels that came out in that book uh, They got their decals. They got their dreadnoughts. They got their praetors. The white scars are just starting to get that stuff, but of course They're getting theirs all with book 8 um, or Post book 8 whereas the Blood Angels got theirs before they got the decals quite a long time before in fact um, About eight months off the top of my head the decals have been out for the Blood Angels so um, yeah, neither the White Scars nor the Dark Angels have got decals in four years, so I can't particularly say they've been well looked after in that regard. Now, don't fret, this is not a negative Nancy episode, despite that intro, but it's worth pointing out, it has been a long development road for the Dark Angels, and yet now we're starting to see progress, and very soon after Book 8. So really it's a positive that I'm trying to spin here, guys, in case you didn't understand that. So, Dark Angels. Well, first off, what do I think of these four sculpts? I really like them, although it has been said to me by several people, and I am leaning in this direction. On the characters themselves, it's possibly a little bit too over the top. But we're talking like 3-4%, you know, if we're going to assign an arbitrary figure to it. I like them. I like them a lot. Uh, the Praetor in Power Armor, I don't like that head, but as we all know, heads are an easy thing to swap in 30k, so that's not really an issue. Uh, I think a Peasant Bowl Cut would really be the go. No, <laughs> uh, something more like a Marine Crew Cut or someone trying to emulate the lion, long hair. I think more of a Knight's uh, style. If we're going to go for a Knight thing with the Dark Angels, well, why don't we actually follow it through? Uh, medieval Knights hairstyles, perhaps. Longer hair, something like uh, Boromir or Aragorn, that sort of quaffed hair, perhaps. Or your Jon Snow, something like that. Um, beards is fine, but the whole shaved head with the beard thing is a little bit weird. He looks a lot like the Stern Guard. Uh, upgrade from 40k for the Space Marine plastic kits. So, can't say I hate it, I just, it was a bit of a weird head choice. Uh, I think we'd all agree that something with maybe like the feathered uh, helmets, like on the previous 40k commanders, would probably look better on him. Uh, also, a very weird thing, his armour on the chest with those weird overlapping plates and the trim, it's Less gothic, which I think is what they were going for, and more chaotic. The pointy little spikes on the trim, um, and the shapes aren't the traditional shapes of armour. Again, not picking on it, just a weird thing I noticed. Apparently the designers haven't decided yet whether the shield is a boarding shield, or some sort of storm shield, or perhaps it works like the Blood Angels Crimson Paladin shields, which lower the strength of incoming attacks. But, yeah... Very weird that they haven't got rules pinged down for it yet, and they've brought the model out first. That's a 40k thing to do, bringing out a model and then giving it rules later. Not a great move in my books. Uh, doomed to failure quite often, because you start letting what the model looks like dictate entirely what its purpose is, rather than finding the niche that it should fit into rules-wise of the game. But... I trust the development team to give us something reasonable. Doesn't mean it's got to be perfect, but reasonable. Terminator, of course, looks great. Uh, interesting choice, giving him the Volkite weapon instead of a plasma weapon. Um, I'm wondering if that's an optional, easy arm to change out. Probably looks like you can cut it off at the hand, so that's a good thing. Alright, uh, the Dreadnoughts both look fantastic. My only problem with the Dreadnoughts, I mean, don't, again, take, take this as negative, guys. 
I'm pointing out that I really like them, but there are minor problems or things that I find I don't like personally. And the Contempt of Dreadnought, the little, uh, I guess that's a Watcher in the Dark, perhaps? Stylized into his chest? It's too big for a start, it takes up too much of the chest, it's too distracting. Um, if it was maybe 50% of that size, it would look a lot better. Um, instead, it's really confronting when you look at the model. The first thing you see is that big red archway with the figure in it on his chest. If it was small, it would be great. But also, what's that iconography doing at this point in time? If this force is a couple of years into the heresy, I don't think the watches in the dark really should have much to do with them. That said, of course, they could always retcon it, but... Uh, They've always known about them, or that it's some other figure of Calibanite mythology, blah, blah, blah. In any case, it's a little over the top. But apart from that, the Dreadnoughts look great, especially the uh, overlapping plates in the left shoulder of the Contemptor, and the way the trim has been turned very gothic on the Leviathan. That looks really cool. Uh, how his, their knees have been turned to little shields. Little touches like that are great, so full thumbs up for their work on these models. Books wise, yeah, it's been a long road, but book six, that's where they popped out. I don't see book six for sale on here anymore. Uh, hit the view wall, I should bring it up. No. Four, five, seven, eight. Oh, there we go. Retribution. In the open my eyes section. Um, yeah, book six is where they got their rules. Obviously, we've had book seven and book eight since then. Why didn't we get... <sighs> book 6 is a campaign book. Book 4 is a campaign book. The reason we got book 4, and I have said this many times, I do apologise to people who've heard it before, but there are people who obviously view these videos who've never been to this channel before. I pity them uh, for what they're now suffering through. But book 1, book 2, book 3, all released in 6th edition 40k. It took a year to get from book one to book two, and then it was six months from book two to book three, and then two weeks after book three drops, seventh edition 40k happens. Book four was planned to be the Thousand Suns, the Burning of Prospero, which we all know got pushed back to book seven, five years later. Um, so in order to make up the difference, because Obviously, the release of 7th edition 40k dramatically changed how psychers and stuff like that worked, but also because the Forgeville design team just didn't have anything ready. They didn't have Custodes ready, they didn't have any Thousand Suns or Space Wolves models ready. They just had nothing. They had the crux of a story, yes, but models, no. Uh, because of that, they came out with Book 4, and they said, Alright, here's Knights, here's Solar Auxilia, because Knights, Imperial Knights, had just come out in plastic in 40k, so great way to shoehorn them in. Uh, they went, here's Knights, here's the Solar Auxilia as a faction that one of the sculptors basically sculpted in his free time and they decided to put into production. And they went, this is a stopgap. But we're going to put in all this campaign stuff so people can run their own uh, events and campaigns. And that was a great idea. It didn't make the book feel like a spacer. Now, then we got book five, six months after that, and that was Tempest, which had... The Ultramarines uh, and Word Bearers, as well as the Imperial Militia. Okay, we're pretty on track here, but the problem is with Book 5, they've covered only the events of Kelth, one campaign. And they introduced one faction, brand new, the Ultramarines, the Imperial Militia, which basically was just rules for existing units that Forge World just had lying around or Cadians, Catachans, whatever you want to use, really. And Werebearers, which just got a few new units added to them, basically, but they had their full rules since Horus Heresy Book 2. Well, now that we have Book 5, you're like, hang on a minute, we've just lost out on the ability of the previous books, which inserted four legions. I'm thinking either in Book 5 or Book 6 is when they should have done the Dark Angels. There is no reason they couldn't have had the Night Lords having a little tweak who got their rules in book two as well 
So Night Wards and Word Bearers both being a tweak in Book 5 would have been perfectly fine. They both came from the same book. And you could have had the Kelth Campaign and the Thramus Crusade in the same book. And that would tie in very well with the themes of the novels, with the Ultrarines and the Dark Angels spending a lot of time together in the Heresy and butting heads the whole time, I'll add. Then we got Book 6, because they still weren't ready to make a move on the Thousand Sons and Space Wolves and Custodes and the Sisters of Silence, which, again, a four-faction book. When Book 6 came out, some people love it, because it's got campaign stuff, and it expands on Book 4's campaigns. I personally dislike it, because of the fact that I feel like we got nothing in it apart from that. The only new models that tied into the book that we got was... Nathaniel Garrow and the librarian that goes with him. I uh, can't remember off the top of my head, unfortunately. Uh, but anyway, he's an Ultramarines librarian who joins the Grey Knights. But that was essentially it. We got rules, however, for the Blood Angels, Dark Angels, and White Scars. And it's these very rules I'll read out to you shortly. And also. They added a few new rights of war. They gave us rules for the Shattered Legions, which clearly weren't playtested. They gave us rules for the Black Shields, which probably weren't playtested. Uh, overall, I find Book 6 very underwhelming because of this fact. Because I'm like, hey, you could have done the Dark Angels and Night Lords in this book. You could have done it in Book 5, you could have done it in Book 6. And yet here we are looking at Book 9. And once again, instead of the pace of the earlier books where four legions or four factions would come out at once we're now again in a place where it's like here's one faction and they're going to do sub factions of existing shit namely they're going to do dark mechanicum and they're going to touch up the night wards i believe this is stuff that could have been done in previous books it is stuff that could have been done in the book that just came out but they wanted to fill in the Chondax situation with the White Scars rather than doing, say, Dark Mechanicus then. Would have been a cool time to do it. Whatever, this is where we're at. So that's the brief rundown uh, through my grumpy eyes of the situation that got us to here. Now, this is why I think it's a positive that at least we are getting a Book 9 reasonably soon. And I say that because, well, hell... Why would they be bringing out models for it and talking about things in the book if they weren't planning on dropping it sometime within the next year? And I say year, because if they're still playtesting rules, that means they haven't even gone to the printers yet. They're still doing artwork. They've definitely not gone to the printers yet. They haven't even got to the editing stage. Uh, then again, having seen how many fuck-ups are in the last three books, editing's really just more of an... Eh, token job at this point with Forge World. And if anyone wants to debate me on that, please email me at I don't give a shit, go fuck yourself, you know there's a bunch of mistakes in these books, dot com. Alright. As you can see, the Dark Angels here haven't exactly been blessed by the, uh, gods of parts. Uh, in fact, the Cataphracti Iliastus Patent Assault Cannon isn't even a weapon they can take. It's somehow in the Loyalist Legionis Astartes Dark Angels filter because the people who design this website are high on PCP. So yeah, uh, they lost the torsos that were bought out for them because reasons. Um, and they don't have decals, as I mentioned earlier, four years since they got their rules and no decals. So that's a problem. Let's go back to the pretty pictures of the Dark Angels and think of happy thoughts. What I want to do is now take this opportunity to talk about what their Legion as a Studies rules are, how they've performed in the games I've seen of them on the tabletop and when I've played against them, and some things that need changing that I'm hoping change coming with book 9 so first of all they have the Legion as a Stardis rule which is a, you may always attempt to regroup and no matter what your casualties are at your normal leadership they have mastery of the blade which is when fighting in an assault with one of the following weapons a combat blade which every marine has a chainsword 
Heavy Chain Sword or Power Sword, Tyrannic Great Sword, Calbanite Warblade, and Paragon Blades, which are modelled as swords. And when fighting a model with an equal weapon skill, a model with this special rule strikes on a 3 plus. That's pretty cool. So what that means is in a fight with another Praetor, for example, you're both weapon skill 6, you'll hit him on 3s, he'll hit you on 4s. It's a minor buff, uh, but it really will come in handy on things like Assault Marines. Hitting World Eaters Assault Marines on a 3, while well, they're hitting you on a 4. Downside is, though, you're in combat with World Eaters Assault Marines, and they've got 4 attacks, and you've got... Well, if you charged, you'll have 3. If they've charged, they've got 4. So, you don't want to be fighting World Eaters in close combat. Come on, let's... <laughs> Alright, Covenant of Death. For the First Legion, no victory is complete unless a foe is slain outright or utterly brought to ruin. If at the end of the game the opposing force has an equal or greater number of units in play than an army which has Dark Angels as its primary detachment, including any allied units in the total, the opposing force gains an additional D3 victory points. Fleeing units do not count towards working out this total. Yeah. So what am I getting at here? There is one buff for being Dark Angels, and that's hitting models that have the same weapon skill. If you're armed with a sword, not with power fists, things like that, with a sword, you'll hit them on a 3+. plus. But of course, if you lose more models than the other guy, or you have less models left alive, they get D3 victory points. There's pretty much no buffs at all for being Dark Angels. Compare this to even White Scars. At least White Scars get... If you move 6 inches, your reroll failed to wounds of a 1 with everything. Well, that's great. Uh, if they're a bike of the White Scars, they get move through cover for free. Uh, that's pretty good. What about Blood Angels? Blood Angels have Encarmine Fury. When they use a melee weapon in Assault, they and they and it's the first turn of the Assault, Blood Angels models with the special rule, Encarmine Fury, require one lower result to wound than they normally would, to a minimum of 2+. plus. This effect applies regardless of the weapon they are using. For example, using a strength 4 melee weapon and attacking a target with a toughness of 4, the Blood Angel will require a 3 to wound rather than the usual 4+. plus. Also, they have with remount, without remorse, without relent. Models with the Legion as a Stardis Blood Angels rule must always make a sweeping advance if they are able to, and may not voluntarily go to ground. Usually, you want a sweeping advance. You want to run down your enemy. And usually, you do not want to go to ground. It's not very common to actually need that rule. Uh, cover is pretty prevalent in 30k, and the type of units that you would most want to invoke saves or cover saves on usually will have them, things like Terminators and Jet Bikes. Uh, host of Angels. With the exception of the dedicated transports, a Blood Angels detachment may not have more units of the vehicle type, but it has units of the Legion as Astartes Blood Angels special rule. Not really a downside, guys, because if you take a squad of Marines and you take a tank, then they cancel one another out. You've met the requirements. It's that easy. Um, once you start taking characters, that's an additional unit on its own. Just that one character is an additional tank or dreadnought you may take straight away. So it's... No brainer, it's not really a penalty. So, in Carmine Fury, plus one to wound and a minimum of two plus, that's huge. You're talking power fist wounding toughness seven things on a two plus anyway. You're talking space marines in close combat wounding each other on threes, uh, praetors with paragon blades, for example, wounding people on twos because they're effectively going to be strength six now. That's a good buff as a Legion. They've got better Legion war gear as well, the Iliastus Pattern Assault Cannon. That's a really good weapon. Inferno Pistols, great weapons. Blade of Perdition, brokenly great weapons. So, White Angels have a lot of good going on. White Scars have the Glaive. Fight as a Power Sword or fight as a Power Axe at initiative, but you don't get a bonus attack for it. Eh, good weapon. Ultramarines, like a Titan Axe. It's a power axe that's AP 2 at initiative, and if you roll a 6 to hit, it automatically wounds. And that's not broken at all. And the Dark Angels, they get... 
the Tyrannic Greatsword, which makes you plus two strength, AP three, two-handed, instant death. So you're only ever going to get your minimum number of attacks. And anything with a two plus save will tank you. But if you do get a wound through, you're going to instant kill them. That's not a terrible weapon, but it's not a blade of perdition. Calibanite Warblade, a power sword with plus one strength. You're paying the points for it though. Plasma Repeater. This is the big one that needs modifying. Range 12 inches, strength 6, AP 2, salvo 2, 3, twinling gets hot. You may take it instead of a plasma gun. Now, no, that's instead of a plasma gun, not a twin linked plasma gun. So, here is your choice, Space Marine players. Do you want a rapid fire plasma gun, which is lower strength, and twin linked? But you need to get really close to use it effectively because it's 12 inches range and even if you sit still well you get the extra shot but you gotta hope someone comes within 12 inches of you unlikely if i know you've got that fucking weapon i'm gonna keep my distance and you can't take it on your outrider bikes which are the perfect unit to put on because they come with a twin linked plasma gun and this replaces the plasma gun so a weaker plasma gun that if you don't move and the other guy moves within your firing range, you can fire a third shot and it's twin linked. I don't think it's worth it, especially not for the points. Now they do have a great weapon in the molecular acid shells because their range is 36 because they're a heavy bolter weapon. Strength is only two. The AP is what you roll though. The AP is whatever you roll. AP 1, AP 2, AP 3, 50% chance it's going to ignore Marine Power Armor. 33% chance it's going to ignore Terminator Armor. And it's Poison 2 Plus. This thing is the bane of Mechanicum players. It is the bane of Custode players. Fantastic, fantastic whip. And lastly, Stasis Shell which they can put in grenade launchers. Keep in mind, grenade launchers, you can fire as many times now as you want, and they can also fire them as missiles. Now, when fired as a missile, they're range 24, heavy one, blast three inches, and stasis anomaly. And when fired as a grenade launcher shot, they're range 12, strength three, assault one, blast three inches, stasis anomaly. Stasis Anomaly is that all models in a unit hit by one or more of these weapons suffer a minus one penalty to their weapon skill and initiative to a minimum of one until the end of the turn. Why is this important? This weapon, the Stasis Shell, essentially cancels out Mastery of the Blade, your only buff for being a Dark Angel. So if you fought someone with an equal weapon skill, you hit them on a three, they hit you on a four. Well, if you knock their weapon skill down by one, you get the same effect. You hit them on a three, they hit you on a four. It's a very bizarre combination. So I think they need to rework that or rework their legion rules, especially. I think I think the legion rule is what's really suffering. Master of the Blade is just crap. It's probably the worst of all of the legion buffs, that sort of thing. Even the Emperor's Children are better. <laughs> uh, their buffs for like challenges and higher initiative like charge, that sort of thing, is better than the possible chance that with the sword to hit the other guy slightly easier in some circumstances. So that's essentially the Dark Angels rules. They have two rights of war, the Iron Wing Protocol and the Raven Wing Protocol. They want to update these and bring out all the different wings, like the Death Wing, Dread Wing, Iron Wing, Fire Wing, whatever they're all called. In book nine, this is what the designers or developers over at Forge World have said. But essentially, it boils down to this: the Iron Wing Protocol is terrible. The Raven Wing Protocol is good, and possibly brokenly so. And all of the successful Dark Angels players I've ever played against or seen play, and this is very important because I've seen them for a lot over the last four years. They are a popular legion. There are only ever two builds, ever. That's not to say people 
don't step outside the box, but the builds are Ravenwing or Heavy Bolter Spam. And that is it. And a lot of people like to combine the two together to have Heavy Bolter Spamming Ravenwing Jet Bikes because of Molecular Acid Rounds. And it's predictable what the results are of that. If you've got 30 jet bikes on the table and they're all firing heavy bolters that hit you on threes, wound you on twos and ignore your armor, it's pretty understandable what happens. The people you're playing against don't really like it. You win a lot of games though. I mean, that's a positive, but yeah. So it doesn't take advantage that Ravewing protocol either of the fact that your Dark Angels, the whole plus one um, on the to hits, uh, if you have the same weapon skill as the other guy, yeah. yeah. It, it doesn't help because you're going to be using bikes to keep your distance and shoot the fuck out of the other guy, the White Scars tactic. Throwing your bikes into close combat turns a three shot heavy bolter that hits on threes wounds on twos into a marine with one attack that hits on fours maybe threes and wounds on fours and people get a save against it it's just an outright downgrade putting your marines into close combat with dark angels on jet bikes in the right wing protocol so people just don't do it they just sit back and shoot and it's a very boring army to see because of that so molecular acid has to be fixed just nerf it 1d6 for the whole unit instead of per heavy bolter perhaps or drop it to a flat out ap3 or keep it at the ap whatever but don't give it two plus poison something needs to be done some sort of rejigging of how it works because right now it's, it's it's not in a good place it's a crutch people can go to and that's the thing the dark angels have bad rules but with that one weapon, Molecular Acid, and the Ravenwing Protocol, it turns them from terrible tier legion to probably the top three. It is really hard to take them down. I'd say the top three legions are probably Thousand Suns, Blood Angels, Dark Angels. And I'd say Ultramarines is, is right up there for number four. Even though people will probably disagree with me, I think I have the experience to make the call at this point, guys. I've been playing Heresy since the beginning all over this country. And I'm even playing internationally this year. So, yeah. Thousand Suns, of course, have cults on everyone and a lot of wizards, which, if the dice favor you, is just unbeatable. And with things like the Sekhmet, which are Mastery Level 2 Terminators, which are cheaper than Legion Terminators for a lot of people, better armed, force weapons, come on, uh, multiple wounds... The cult bonuses, talking three up saves and no negative modifiers from having a storm shield. Just brutal Thousand Suns. Blood Angels with um, Day of Revelation, combined with the Allegiant traits, incredibly brutal. And of course, Dark Angels, Acid Jet Bikes, as we've been through. So, those are the changes I want to see. Uh, fix heavy bolters, make them worse. Fix plasma repeaters, make them better. Fix things like Calvinite. Well, well, Calvinite blades aren't broken. Tyrannic greatswords aren't broken. They're just sort of niche. They're like the World Eaters Kadare weapons. They're, yeah, yeah, they exist. You know, you can use them. They're somewhat effective. But they're not the, oh, like, fuck yeah, I want to take that. I've got to take that. I've got to have that in my army. Sort of weapon that, like, the Blade of Perdition is, for example. Uh, in the Blood Angels, or that the Glaives are for the White Scars, or the Legate Titan Axes are for the Ultramarines. It's not that kind of weapon. They need a weapon like that. Uh, Dark Angels of the Legion can have the most fun with, because they have all the hoarded technology from when they were the only Legion hanging around with the Thunder Warriors. Um, my head cannon is still that the Dark Angels, the reason why they don't like bonding with other Legions, is because they had to kill the Thunder Warriors, they had to be the guys who betrayed them, who ordered 66 of them. And that just mentally scar them. They don't want to grow close to anyone else in case they have to do that shit again. I think it's a good head of cannon. Um, yeah. So Dark Angels. I like the models. I like where they're at. 
give them some fucking decals, Forge World. You've had four years. It's not hard to draw up one A4 sheet. Also, White Scars deserve one as well. Again, four fucking years, one A4 sheet. Get on it. Um, please, fix this Legion. They've got a lot of issues, and it shouldn't be just two viable builds, which is really just one viable build. It's a poor use of the Legion, and it doesn't come anywhere close to displaying the Legion and what we know they're capable of as a player base, uh, as a community. And I think everyone can agree that the Dark Angels are not the one note heavy bolter army. They are a force of noble knights. The first legion, the guys who use the deadliest war gear, the guys who whose Primarch beat the shit out of Lemon Ras in a fist fight. Uh, even if, you know, it was a coward punch, as some people will say. You know. Two Primarchs fought that day, one walked away. So make your own minds up. <laughs> Mac with the outer circle. Thank you all for watching. See you all next time.